Hey guys, Glenn here. Super exciting news. There's a new Prusa Slicer update that you're actually gonna want, and I'm super excited about it. Let's dive in. Now before I begin, Kevin Ryan, thank you so much for being my newest channel member. I really appreciate you. Now, Prusa Slicer 2.6.0 just came out um, June 19th of this year, which is great. I didn't update because I didn't see anything that really, really needed updating, at least for my print farm. But there is a pre-release that I'm super excited about and I'm going to show you right now. If you want to download this, it'll be linked down below. This is 2.6.1RC-RC1. Now, this is just a candidate release, uh, which you can download and try out, but there might be some of the bugs. Uh, it says here, this is first, this is a first release candidate of Prusa Slicer 2.6.1. This release brings significantly improved arrange function, which is nice. Can't complain about that, because I feel like the one that we have right now is kind of finicky. New features in the cut tool, improved embossing on curved surfaces, and various small other improvements and bug fixes but they did not talk about the one that I'm excited about. Now we can go over arrange improvements. You can see the difference in arrangements um, are pretty staggering. If you're gonna be doing a print like this, you can see the difference. It's, that's a lot better, obviously, right? Currently there are three distinct levels of geometry handling, uh, which can be selected using the drop down menu in the arrange dialog. Fast, balanced, and accurate. Um, you know, at any point you can pause this video and look at this. I'm just going to run it, run you through real quick what the update is. As another improvement, arbitrary bed shapes are now supported. Also, several bugs uh, were fixed along the way, which whatever. Some people experience the bugs, some people don't. I'm not going to focus on what bugs were fixed. I think it's an exhaustive list and I'm just going to go over the improvements. Now, this is what I'm super, super excited about. Okay, new cutting tool. New cutting mode is now available in the cut tool. Dovetail mode automatically creates a tongue and groove connection that allows sliding one part into the other. Okay, and that's not all. The geometry of the connection is adjustable in the cut tool dialog. Also, a new connector type was added, snap. So these two connections are going to make it so much easier to make a big model uh, that doesn't fit on a regular like MK uh, on a regular Mark III or or even a smaller printer. Um, and this is not just for Prusa. This, you know, a lot of a lot of companies use Prusa Slicer. They just reskin it. So a lot of companies are going to get this upgrade. Now think about how easy it's going to be because I'm actually trying to build a, a life-size Terminator right now, and if I can slice the big parts. And have them dovetail into another. I'm gonna have to try the dovetail versus the snap connector. I'm assuming that it's gonna be the dovetail is gonna be smoother as long as you're more dialed in. It probably has to be more dialed in. Um, but I'm gonna try these out, and I'll probably make a video about how uh, good the improvements are or if they're crap. But um, I I'm thinking this is gonna be really good because it, it is a pre-release. But they wouldn't put it in the pre-release if it wasn't working. On top of that, you got embossed improvements. Um, the emboss tool introduced um, in 2.6.0 now allows much better projection on uh, curved surfaces, which that was a problem, and I'm glad they're fixing it. The feature is accessible through um, a pair, pair glyph orientation checkbox in the emboss dialog. When checked, the individual glyphs are perpendicularly projected along a curved line on the surface. The idea was inspired by the implementation of Bamboo Studio. See, even there, right there, you, you can see that even Bamboo Studio, Studio, which their stuff is proprietary, um, you can't use it with other printers and stuff like that. Um, they're still inspiring even Prusa, which is which is crazy that um, other 3D printer companies can inspire each other like this. It's it's awesome. Um, but Prusa, just love how Prusa always takes things from other people and makes it their own um, and just makes it open source, which is awesome. Other improvements um, with respect to uh, 2.6.0, when using multi-material painting tool, there is now uh, an option that you can enable interlocking of the painted patches with the neighboring segments. This improves connection of the patches, 
The setting is available at this setting um, and pause if you want to read it. Now, um, a lot of little things you're not going to care about most likely, but you can pause on this video at any moment if you want. Lots of bug fixes. I'm not going to read every single one. So right down here, I'm going to link down below where you can download it and try it out. Just keep in mind that it's a pre-release. Um, it may not be perfect. However, um, I'm going to download it and try it uh, because I'm so excited about this upgrade. It's so cool. Uh, there's a bunch of upgrades, but um, especially the interlocking, that is awesome. So what do you guys think? Is Dubtail or Snap going to be the better one? Have you tried it yet? It's only been released a few days. Um, in the pre-release, so a lot of you guys probably haven't tried it. A lot of you guys probably don't even know it exists yet. Which one are you guys excited about? Comment down below. Are you guys excited at all, or maybe you just don't care? Are you going to use this feature? I bet that a lot of people are going to use this feature because um, there's so many different applications, not just making like big things and and being able to connect them easy because we used to have to put pins in there and glue them and all kinds of other things or use a different kind of software to blow them up. Like Luban 3D, for instance, um, you know, I, I'll show you this website. You can download this um, and, you know, you can do a lot of stuff with it. You could do lithophanes, um, you know, photo magic, uh, cookie cutters, um, you know, there's so much stuff that you can do with this, but one of the things was like to turn a photo into a, a, a 3D puzzle. So all this stuff still works. Um, here is something like this um, segment, segmented uh, 3D mesh. So you can, you know, put the connectors together, for instance, and make a, like a big uh, model. Like if you're if you're blowing up a, a baby Yoda and you want to make it six foot tall, you're going to use something like this to do it. So. Now you can do a right and Prusa slicer and it's their own proprietary kind of thing that, you know, I'm really excited about and I got to try it soon, as soon as I have some time. Let me show you Luban real quick and, and how you could do it right now if you wanted to. Okay, so we're in Luban now. Um, Luban, Luban, however you pronounce it, I don't know. Uh, if I'm butchering it, Luban, just comment down below, let me know. Um, so we're going to open. Go to the uh, STL that you want. So we're going to do this one that I just downloaded the tooth. Okay. The download. You're going to go to mesh and then cut. This is only just one of the things that this thing could do. All right. Um, we'll say we'll do it in inches for now. Just so I can explain this a little better. Um, let me uh, close the window. Expanded for some reason. Um, now... Uh, you got to put your printer size in there, uh, which I don't know what it is in inches. I usually do this in millimeters. I'm just trying to show you that how to make uh, one in inches. Now, now we'll make it like 36 inches, so like three foot tall uh, tooth. You can see here like the segments. It shows you a little preview of it. Um, you you want to make sure it's on modular cut, and you'll probably do millimeters because that's usually what we do. Just it's inches for now just to show you and then single printer uh, rectangle shape is fine you can also do a circle shape but close cut yes natural cut no part number yes um, it's good to have the part numbers and because if you don't it's it's not gonna go well to put together and then you can choose between a plug or a dowel or none if you're just gonna glue it together but I recommend a plug or a dowel. Dowel, you actually need to put them in both uh, both sides. But the plug is the easier one, which is that's what I use. And the design, you'll just leave it on prism. The shape, square, and then the depth ratio, you know, 0.2 inches. Um, if you're doing millimeters, you want to do like 1.5 or 2 millimeters, um, depending on it depends on what it what it is, but. Tolerance is zero, and then you can hit cut. You're going to select the folder it's going to go into. Select it. And then it's going to process. So I'm going to uh, fast forward this because it's going to take a few minutes, and I have a very fast computer. Okay, so it's done. Um, I don't know why it still says processing, but um, it's just about done. So how many parts is 205 if you wanted to do this with the printer? Um, 27 kilograms, 
so you can you can see how many how many spools you need to buy. So you need to buy 28 spools to make sure you have enough kilograms. Um, and also you might have some failures and stuff. Might only buy 30 just in case. And then uh, the, the the printer hours is 3,000 hours. Uh, assembly is 12 hours, which I don't know how they figure that. Um, the total time is 3,046 hours. So this is just a gist of what you can do with this programming. Now, if you want to make something big, you're going to have to buy their licensing. Just keep that in mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know it's a quick video, but I just want to like tell you what what you need to know this um, that this is coming out. Um, please like the video. Subscribe if you like content like this or especially making money with your 3D printer. That's what I focus on. And you guys... Have a great day.